Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk, and we've got a miserable Monday experience here today. Kinda, sorta. The Foch B, if you've been following as I've going through the as I've been going through the Hunter Battle Challenge, has been a bit of a thorn in my side, and I'm happy to I'm happy to report that I did get it to 50% and in 100 battles. It was a struggle. I didn't have a lot of battles when I started this thing. It's three or four. We'll take a look at the numbers in a minute. But it was it was difficult at first. And I was actually at about 47% with about 10 battles to go. So I had to have a bit of a surge even to make it to 50%. And I had three draws in there I had to deal with as well. So that got really, really interesting. So let's take a look at this really quickly. I have, uh, I'm running the IA. Now this could have a lot to do with my problems is my setup, admittedly. I set this up and then I kind of forgot about it and I didn't think about it too hard until actually I was done and I looked down and I went, oh, I don't actually have a second setup on this. So there's probably a better setup than that. If anyone has a better idea, chuck it down there in the comments. But I was running Bounty IA, Bounty Rotation Mechanism and Vents. It's an auto loader, so you can't have a rammer. It doesn't have a vert stab. So I'm not sure exactly what else might be a good thing. I'm running a fire extinguisher uh, personal reserve thing and I've got food on it so the crew is okay it's a, like a three skill working on their fourth skill crew they have brothers in arms all that good stuff we have 18 gold rounds and 48 regular rounds and six heat rounds that's a lie they're not heat rounds they're HE rounds so let's take a look at how this went down stats wise real quick before we get started because I really feel like this game encapsulates exactly my experience with this tank at times if you can get that auto loader humming, you can drop a bunch of damage. And the reload's long, but it's not too gross, about 31, 32 seconds. So you're back in the fight, but I'm gonna tell you, it, it's a casemate, the gun is okay accuracy. It's just, it was just really a struggle all around for me. But I'll show you exactly what I mean when we get into the battle. But let's take a look at these numbers here real quick. But it looks like in the last thousand battles, I played it 96 times to get it to 100 battles, to 100 battles. So I only had four battles in it before that. And we were sitting at 50% in all of those battles in the last 96 battles. I got to 50%, so I must have started at 50 or something slightly above, taking into account the draws and all that stuff. 2300 DPG, which is above average for tier 10, but nothing to write home about. And it's right in, kind of in my tier 10 regime, maybe a slightly low. But let's take a look then. I, there was a learning curve. That's the good news. There was a, a slight, albeit slight, learning curve to be had with this thing in the last 30 days. I was able to bring it to a 54% and I increased the win 8 and the DPG slightly. So no great shakes. It's not like I added a whole extra shot in there, which is really what I'd like. I'd love to see that at more like 2700. Uh, 3000 in 100 battles is probably a little above my tier 10 gameplay at the moment. But I'd love to have seen it about 37, 26, sorry, 20, well, 37 would be fantastic. <laughs> 26, 27, 100, but we, we managed to claw our ways, ways up to 2,491. So, learning curve, I'll take that. The survival's nice at 45%. So, you know, I was surviving in battles and, and getting wins. And you'll see that when you're running a 54%, 55% kind of win rate. But... I'm just glad that there was some kind of learning curve. This is embarrassing. This stir of 81 is absolutely crushing my will to live. I got to tell you that for nothing. All right. And I'm almost done with it. It's, ugh, man, I don't know why. But anyway, we're talking about the, what is this thing? I don't know. The Foch B. It just completely escaped my brain there for a moment. We are here on Himmel's Highway Dorf, spawned into the north in a standard battle. And right off the bat, one of the things I struggled with on this tank is, do I stay or do I go? Am I an aggressive guy up front? Am I a camp of a ding dang? Am I somewhere in between? Where do I go on maps with this thing? So, we will get going and I'll show you what I was doing here. And this will be more of me talking to you guys about what I was doing and thinking. And then you guys go ahead and let me know where I'm wrong. Because at this point, I will take any advice I can take. So I'm going to go right around here-ish, show you what I'm doing with my camera, and I'm hoping to get some spots, but right off the bat you'll notice that we're just not getting anybody. <laughs> so my cunning plan to get shots maybe at mediums or whatever over in the little village over there is completely obliterated. Now all of a sudden I'm very worried about the EBR 105. 
I don't want him to come up here and lie me, but he looks busy with those fellers, so I'm hoping they'll kill him. Wouldn't it be nice if they'd have managed that on the 75 hit point EBR who is now raging over towards me? <laughs> and again, kind of my experience with this tank. You know, that's a not a bad spot. You can get some shots and things in there. It is a case mate. I'm just backing out. We're going to kill him, right? Nope. Ain't going to happen. That got me lit. I probably shouldn't have fired. I don't think I would have been lit if I hadn't fired. But I don't eat shots. 4005 takes a stab. And I'm assuming since 4005 didn't start moving, he was actually hidden as well until he fired. Good news is I don't take any long range shots. And now I'm thinking, hey, our EBR, he's going to go in there and kill this guy. But he takes a hit and then he rages off. And I'm thinking, man, you got to kill that dude. If you kill that EBR, then we have a huge advantage. He has to go away. And then we have a bat shot coming in. As a matter of fact, there's two bat shots on the enemy team. I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. Am I going to get lit again? I did not get lit. Fantastic. Maybe a chance at a snap there. Their IS-7 shows up in the corner, and again, this is kind of what I'm talking about with this tank. Now I'm in this situation going, well, this is no bueno. This whole flank is about to fall. I'm not going to be able to stand in here and take guys out. There goes our bat chat that was in the corner, and all of a sudden I'm basically on the run. Good news is our heavies are having a pretty good time of it. Why? Because a couple of their important tanks were not in the town, i.e. the IS-7, for example. And look at this, their EBR is still alive. And I'm thinking, this is not good here. Not good. Maybe I can kill him if he comes up and over. And I'm just trying to get away. I think I, think I should have just spun around and run for my life much earlier than this. I will get away. But I was sort of expecting maybe the bat chat to come up and over and maybe I could clip that guy out. I'm also now wishing I had hit C and reloaded a while ago, but I don't think I could have known. I was really expecting the bat chat and maybe some of his buddies to come up and over and push the advantage. And now I'm on the way out of here. This does have decent maneuverability or mobility in terms of straight line speed. So I'm cruising along at about, what, 40, 45? And I have a reasonable expectation to get away. I'm kind of leaving out to dry the GWE 100, but he should have been moving long ago. Never mind. He's taken care of. <laughs> now, this feels like a loss. But what I know and what you know about this map is this is probably one of the more dangerous situations for an enemy team to come boiling up over onto the cap when the other team still has some sniperinos and whatnot. And I want you to notice what happens down in the south because it's absolutely fantastic. So we get some of these guys. I'll take kind of a... I think I get one decent shot here. There we go. We put one on him. We try to shoot another one, but he just sneaks away. And we'll back out. That leaves us three shells. Got 13-105 on my side. I'm really expecting them to push hard, so I'm going to hang out here with my three shells. I take a bad shot here. And I think part of my problem definitely is just rushing shots a little bit. When you're taking these longer range shots, you do have to be much more careful than sometimes I am. That worked out for me. And now we'll back out. So those medium to short range heavy slash medium tank shots where you can get away with a, with not quite fully zoomed. At ranges like that, tanks like this, you got to be really careful with those. I don't do them uh, unless it's just an emergency or something like that. So I'm going to keep on backing out of this thing because I need to reload. There's that 31 second reload. It's definitely taken me out of the fight for a while, but it's not terrible. I like that we have a bat chat back here and a 13105 and just golf clap, man. Now, I say something in chat, and one of the heavies uh, takes exception to it. He thought I was giving him grief. I absolutely was not in this case. When I turned, when I looked down the mini-map and I saw every single heavy coming back to the north and none of them pushing, I was like, golf clap, fellas. Absolutely fantastic. And that's now got me thinking, all right, I'm going to come up here and start kind of engaging these guys a little bit because I got full hit points. So we'll just watch how this goes down. What the... All right, that dude was moving, right? Doink! My experience in this tank is that thing is an absolute magnet. And I don't know why I can't ever hit it, but I get absolutely shredded when I play this thing with that top bar right there. So, put a shot on him. Alright, oh, wait a minute. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Here we go. Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I 
I double dog dare any of you to do that with a bat chat, even at that range. Unreal. All right, so this guy's raging around. I'm like, um, well, that's a bummer. That's gonna. Okay. Oh look, it's a, it's two eyes, a mouth, and a nose now. He's like, oh, <laughs> Mr. Bill. <laughs> Fantastic. I like. I'm just sitting there. I'm just in this game. I in the back of my mind, and this was guys. This was my last game. So it had to be a win to be the to 50%. And I was already going, son of a gun, we're losing. But then I said, look at this. I mean, once again, golf clap for all these fellas. Nicely done. Object 780 platoon coming back in. Uh, and I think they're the ones that thought I was getting on their case, but I absolutely was not. They're just coming back in. And we're cleaning up these dudes that are trying to cap. It's a little bit dangerous because there are two there. But I was able to mix it up with their front edge who are trying to screen. That kept them busy enough that the other guys were able to get in there and finally get some shots, and that was all according to plan. It's just I didn't want to lose like I did here, or at least get dead. All right, good, I'll take that. Now watch this IS-7. Oh, I bounce, all right, okay. Mm. <laughs> Bounced zero, zero. Bounced zero, and we are six seconds from a loss, but they pull it out, they do a nice job. And the aforementioned EBR that I gave a hard time about I'm, and I'm thinking he's probably helped to lose the game. He rages in. Check this out, Biff. Oh, sweet Georgia Brown. He puts a shot, drops him down to 47 seconds. The 13105 is circling the IS7. Absolutely fantastic. All right, Mouse gets in there. We're resetting. We got heavy swarming him. Two of their tanks are back at cap. Probably fell back thinking, ooh, we need to guard cap. And meanwhile, every swinging dude comes back here and annihilates the attack. I just absolutely love it. This is exactly how you win this game. Fantastic job, guys. And I write, I, I put, I got the smart heavies? What? Absolutely not an insult, fellas. Not an insult. I won't, we don't even need to watch them type in their stuff. Uh, it wasn't bad, necessarily. They're just like, screw you or something like that. So that was my experience with the Foshby. You know, you'd get there with your clip and you could do some great work with it. But the armor, I felt like it never held up, but the facts are I was at 0.41 efficiency by the end. That means that it was definitely doing some work, but I had a lot of games like that one where it just felt like that that spotting bar just soaked up every shot. And that, that bat chat was pretty close. He was also stationary. He was aiming in, he knew where to shoot, all that stuff is valid, but absolutely amazing that in three shots in a row, he hit it, and then the IS-7 hit it twice. <laughs> Five shots into that save bar, and I lost every single hit point. I can't 100% prove that last, I'd have to go slow it down and look at it, but I'm pretty sure that last IS-7 shot went into the bar. Um, there you go, unless it was HE and I didn't pay attention. Well, there you go, guys. Foch B, I did claw my way to 50%. There was a learning curve. I was getting better. So what was the learning curve? You just have to be really careful with your positioning. It is more of a support. Find a good place to support. Keep your enough hit points that you can do a little pushing at the end. And it does really well. Like any autoloader, when it gets towards the end of the battle, it's, it's quite good. And if you're on something like proc, try to position yourself maybe on the 1-2 line where, where once something gets lit, you can just send rounds down range until you delete them. That kind of, But you gotta stay, you got to stay unspotted. The armor is okay, but not amazing. And that was my experience, my friends, with the Foch B. So anything I said or did, put it down in the comments that you think I should have done differently or thought about with the Foch B if you have a better way of doing it, especially my, my setup. It's not going to matter because I've stripped all that stuff off, but I am still curious what other people would have used instead of what I was using there. I feel like it was probably not the optimum setup. Maybe it was. Don't know. You guys let me know. That's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Monday. See ya.